ever Aussie sports fan video podcast. Today, myself, Gibbsy, Luke, Paco and Darcy are reviewing the bottom eight team performances over the year. Uh, Darcy starting us off today from ninth with North Melbourne. Yes, um, North Melbourne had a good year this year. They um, had 11 wins and 11 losses with a percentage of 83. And um, they almost made the eight. They, were, they just missed out on percentage to Carlton. Mm. They, um, they played well against the lower sides this year, like, you know, the Essendon, well not the Essendon actually, like yeah, <laughs> your Brisbane's and your Melbourne's and your Richmond's and West Coast, like they've won all the games they should have won pretty much, but against like top, top sides like Collingwood and Geelong, they really just struggled, and then essentially just got destroyed with big losses to the Bulldogs and, yeah, and Collingwood and a 100 point loss to St Kilda. It's where they fell apart. There was really a big difference between the best and the worst, but um, for a young side you can expect inconsistencies. And um, Brad Scott did well. Um, first year for the new coach, Brad Scott, he, he was pretty impressive and was really um, good with the media. He's had, um, been on his show called Fafo and Sider. Thank you, Fafo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for saving me there. Um, and yeah, um, star, star performers this year. Brent Harvey had another brilliant year. He played all 22 games and he averaged 25 disposals and kicked 25 goals. And um, him and Andrew Swallow and Brady Rawlings have all been named in the All Australian squad. And yeah, they've had a they've had some good plays this year. And a special mention for a young gun, Ryan, Ryan Bastinac was here, pick number 26 in the draft. And um, he um, played all game, every single game, and he got Pulled average. Right the rising star yeah, he came fifth in the Rising Star and um, got seven goals. Trey Bate, I don't know if there's that much Trey Bate. Corey Jones and um He's out the door. He's, he's out the door and Josh Smith being delisted as well. And um David Hull might be Trey Bate, I don't know. Because um they don't really need him. They've already got Hamish McIntosh and Goldstein. Mm -hmm. So they don't really need any Ruckman. Yeah, Pitcher is there. Um, and um and Urquhart also might be another one because he's really he's lost his spot on the team this year after he was highly touted and he might be going to the Gold Coast, but chances are they won't really lose anyone. Because they've got a pretty, this is a pretty good shape. Yeah. Um, Port Adelaide finished in 10th position. They brought in a new coach, uh, second half of the year, with Matty Promise, who took over from Choco. Oh, um, um, yes. Um, actually. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Port had a pretty good start to the year. They won five mm -hmm. out of their first seven games and they had a win over St Kilda. And everyone was sort of thinking, oh, you know, there could be a top eight chance this year. But um, they had a shocking form after that. They lost their next nine matches after round seven, including a loss to Richmond. That was Richmond's first win in the year. And when Matty Primus came in, um, they won five out of the last eight games, and they really improved again. They only lost to Collingwood Bulldogs and St Kilda, three top four sides. So Matty Primus might be probably the highest, the top candidate for, um, for this position next year, because Mike Williams is sacked. Um, star performers this year, they had a few good players. Dominic Cassisi, was it his first year as captain? Um, second. 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 Well, he was um he had a good year. He averaged 20 on disposals. He, he was a good leader for them. And Kane Corn is always, you know, he's just, you know, the, the possession. He's just a ball magnet. He averaged 27 disposals. He had a great year. And Daniel Pierce also stepped up this year. Um, after a down year, after winning the Rising Star two years ago, he's back to um good form again. More than two now. <laughs> well, he lost. He won it. He did win it back in 06. Really? He really was. He's been around for that long. But yeah. he's had injuries and stuff since then, and he's yeah. finally he's taken the next step. Mm. I think he's averaged 20 disposals. Obviously, trade back. Crack has already gone to the Gold Coast. That's all done. Um, there's rumours that Stephen Salapek, a uh, top draft pick in 03 in the Wells draft and Goddard, he wants to uh, move to Melbourne. Mm. And Mogwop, he could be trade back. I think just. Because he's had a pretty shocking year and he doesn't even seem very happy at all. Move to his third club, perhaps. Perhaps, but you know. Um, and yeah, that's put Adelaide North Melbourne to you. All right, I've got Adelaide in 11th and Melbourne in 12th. Starting with the Crows, Adelaide, a team that disappointed this year. Players like Tibbet expected to rise, and not until the second half of the year did he really prove his worth. The loss of experienced players like Goodwood and McLeod, Burden, it's going to hurt the Crows. They need to go through a rebuilding phase, and Neil Craig might have to go. He's had six years at the helm. Sure, he's coaching to minor premierships at a prelim final, but still no flag. How much longer do you reckon he's got left in him, boys? Um, I think I think he can still coach there for a couple more years. I think that he, their list is in better shape than people give him credit for. Because they had a poor start to the year, but in the second half of the year they had wins over Geelong and 
they almost um, beat Collingwood two weeks ago. Mm. They were tanned to finish in the top eight. They didn't finish there. So yeah, yeah I think their second yeah. half of the year they've proven that they have got a good list. We'll yeah. see if, he, yeah, if they don't make the finals next year. Craig's gone. Yeah, star performer Scott Thompson, perhaps the only current player in the squad uh, pushing elite status. He's the engine room of the, engine room of the midfield. He's thrived with the Crows since he moved from Melbourne five years ago. Young Gunfield Davis. Davis has shown a bit in his debut season after not playing a game last year. His versatility, being able to play down forward or back, is going to be handy for the Crows, nominated for the NAB Rising Star in round 16. Trade bait Jonathan Griffin, the out of favour Ruckman, has uh, struggled to cement his position in the Crows lineup, um, sometimes being on third or fourth Ruckman. This year, with both Seller and Moran injured, he sort of had a um, tip of playing at forward. He sort of had a bit of a chance to work in tandem with Ivan Marriage and try and find his spot in the Crows side, but Griffin is requesting a move back home to WA, and if that doesn't uh, come to plans, he may move to the Gold Coast. Melbourne in 12th. For a side that's won the Wooden Spoon the past two years, it's been a great improvement. No longer an easy beat side, on the way up and have challenged many higher teams, including the Pies twice. Star performer of Brad Green, the old store just keeps on pushing out the big games year after year. In terms of goals, this has been his best year, 55. Although he's getting on with age, it'll be sad to see us of these lose such a potent forward. Young gun Liam Jarrow, yes, it's his second year, but he's just too exciting, exciting to leave out. His natural ability is perhaps better than perhaps anyone who's ever played the game. As evident in his high flying, high flying mark, which is a chance mark of the year, he's so skillful and you can tell by the landing that he just knows how to read, he just knows what he's so well. It's, going, it's Maloney who got up with it in the end. He thumps it long. Jarrah! Unbelievable! Trade bait Matthew Warnock. Perhaps the other Warnock might be leaving his club as well. Brother of Carlton being called Robbie. Warnock's played just 13 games uh, in defence this year and has looked out of place in times, so there might be a little bit of. Uh, dealing at trade season. Um, uh, Luke, you have Brisbane and Essendon. Yep, uh, Brisbane uh, had a pretty poor, oh, actually had a pretty good start to you winning their uh, first four games. Their draft picks, they've got um, Brennan Favola, Eamon Buchanan, Brent Staker and Matt McGuire and they were premiership, one of the premiership favourites uh, going in to the year. They had a good start. Uh, Josh Drummond and Matt McGuire then injured themselves and their first loss was against Melbourne by about 50 points and pretty much after that they sort of, uh, dropped their form and yeah they had a pretty poor year as um, last year Voss got them to the semi-final but this year they um, just scraped in 13. You got a star performer Luke for Britain? Uh, yes I do, a uh, star performer was John Brown even though he was injury uh, round 12 uh, he, he's kicked over 50 goals for him. He has carried them over the line for every game, pretty much, against West Coast to keep the winning goal. Mm. When he's not uh, starring, him or Fev, uh, they really seem to go downhill and uh, lose most of their games. Um, a young gun, I reckon, Top Banfield, he played all 22 games this year. Uh, he's kicked 26 goals. Uh, he's a fiery player. Fiery head. Yes, <laughs> redhead. Um, and he just tries to do everything for the club on the field and off the field, and yeah. Uh, Trey Bay uh, has to go to Jared Brennan. Um, uh, Brennan, yes, uh, he's been offered money from the Gold Coast, as he's getting a pretty um, poor paint out of Brisbane. Uh, if not Gold Coast, he could be going to Carlton or Essendon. Um, Brennan Favola, uh, he has been offered money also from the Gold Coast and uh, might might leave uh, Brisbane and might go to his third club. Riscatelli is also a trade bait as he said he wants to play for a Melbourne team. Ed Voss doesn't really want him at the club, even though he'll probably be best in Paris this year. And move on to Essendon. Yeah, Essendon, uh, they've had a pretty poor year. <laughs> Matthew Knight, he's... Um, he didn't really <coughs> coach him that well this year. He's been uh, dropped as a coach. A couple of days ago, it was announced that he's been dropped and he gets a million dollar payout. Uh, Essendon, yes, yeah, not bad. <laughs> bad money. Um, is they just couldn't capitalise and find their wins. Um, yeah, it was a waste waste of a season for him as last year they came, uh, they came eighth. Uh, many nights out the door. Yeah, many, yeah many nights out the door and. Uh, it's apparently it's either James Hurd or Mark Williams, but more likely to be Mark Williams as he's had um, premiership experience. 
Uh, start performer for Essendon has got to be Joe Watson. He's started all year for the midfield, and he's working hard. At, yeah, he's been working hard in the mid midfield, and has tried uh, to pull a struggling Bombers side over the line, but cannot influence the players. Uh, young gun Kyle Hardingham, uh, Hardingham has shown a fair bit up forward. Uh, he's kicked a few goals for him, taken a few few grabs up there. Good on him. Yes, and um, he has a lot of talent, and he should. And he should be uh, taking over Lloyd's or Lucas's spot. It's him or um, Gumbleton will have to be good for next year. Uh, Trey Bay, Brent Stanley, um hasn't really had a good year as his contract expires at the end of the year. And could be uh, Trey Bay to lure in a good midfielder from another club. As Kyle Remus and Mark McVeigh have signed a two year contract. And that's pretty much all for my Brisbane and Essendon review. Uh, Paco, you've had a look at Richmond and West Coast season. Yep, I uh, start off with Richmond. Well, we start off the year very poorly with a, a non-game losing streak. Then we got a win over Port, which sparked a comeback, and we started winning, playing some good football. Uh, we entered the season with a big uh, clean out with uh, 40 players uh, acts from the club that were traded, and then we had Toji Passion. Coaching panel shuffled around and Terry Wallace was sacked. Um, what not a bad year. Throwing aside the fifth day position, we've been playing well for a young club, challenging some top teams. Mm. But we just, just lack an experience. We just we show up. We can't put four quarters together, and we've shown that over the past past couple of weeks against Saints. We were in the match and then we faded out and we used to run over us. Um, Richmond, we have blooded a lot of kids in the draft, uh, came through the draft this year. Um, Dustin Martin, go with the young gun. Dustin Martin, he has a magnificent year, start through his AFL career. Uh, he was ineligible to win the Rising Star Award, but he would have been a magic tender if he was. Uh, yeah, in the running for Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, Alright, star performer. Uh, I can't go past Jack Rewell. Magnificent year. He's been, he won the Colin medal, the Jack Dye medal, and he's in the top 40 in the whole Australian squad, along with <coughs> fellow star player, Brett Delenio. Uh Rewell kicked 78 goals this year, including his 10 goal game against the Eagles, in round 12 and 7 goal haul against St. Kilda two weeks ago. Moving on to the trade bay. We have a few players that could be uh, put up for trade. Richard Tablig, he's been, uh, hasn't risen to what we had on him ex expectations. Uh, along with Alex Rance, Shane Tuck and Dean Polo, look on, we're going to trade Shane Tuck. Reckon he's uh, in there when we need him. Alright, uh, West Coast now, finished 16, with 16 points, forwards, 18 losses, and 77%. Well, what can you say? West Coast had a very disappointing year for the, they were the first wooden spoon ever in the history of the club. The young side have blooded a few new players this year. Their own boy, John Jones, Jones yeah, very yeah. happy for him. Yeah. And uh, Ashley, Ashley Smith, Luke Shuey, Brandon Shepard, Matthew Spanger, uh, Andrew Stry, Kobe Stevens, and Patrick Gibbon. Uh, moving on to the star performer, Mark McCraw. He's been probably the best player at the Eagles this year. With his goal kicking, he's just carried the club. He's been put in the top 40 for all Australia. Should make the final Should make, should make the final yeah. strength. Mm. And he kicked, the, kicked 63 goals this year with his uh, 12 goal haul against the Bobbers. Now in round... Oh, I don't know which round it was, but still. <laughs> uh, now Young Gun... Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, uh, young Gun, Luke Shuey. Shuey has the potential to be anything. He has shown some good development this year and he's been playing some good football. And he could turn it to anything. He's just Along with like Kobe Stevens to that, they all got mm -hmm. potential to turn into anything. Yeah, Chris Jones. Maybe, maybe even the next year's staff. Perhaps. All right, Trey Bay, Quinton Lynch. He has been on the end of the club. He's thrown out a bit from inside, and he's left. He's been kicked out the side, but he's been playing some good football. So that may, that may, uh, West Coast Manor or something. We don't like him. Might be on the uh, way to Gold Coast Suns. We never know. Mm. That's that's the end of the first part of ASF's vodka. Thank you.